you're a cover all. God bless you. You may be seated. The story that we chose for our text tonight is a story in the life of Joseph and his army. My, what a powerful, powerful victory they had experienced and were rejoicing in. And when it was that they decided to return home, unbeknownst to them, they had found something very tragic had taken place in their absence. For in their absence, we found in our scripture text tonight that the Amalekites had came and invaded that area. They had found them even into the city where David had placed his family and the families of those soldiers and warriors that he had taken with him. They rejoiced until they realized and found out that they had been robbed. What a tragic thing. I don't know if you've ever had someone rob you. No, if your house has never been broken into, your car has never been broken into, anything's ever been stolen from you. But you know the being of violation. You know the feeling of vulnerability. You know how very naked it makes you feel to think that strangers have been in your house and touched your possessions. But not only did they touch their possessions, but they captured their wives and captured their sons and captured their daughters and took them away. The weeping and the crying and the grief and the sorrow that those mighty strong warriors and soldiers felt was of such a nature that the scripture says they wept until there was no more power in them to weep anymore. And then they looked for somebody to blame. And guess who it was? They needed to talk among themselves and say, well, if we hadn't followed David off into that valley, if we hadn't left home, if we had been here to protect our stuff and protect our families, it probably would have never happened. We don't have scripture for that. But I'm just assuming that there must have been some blame that was mentioned and discussed among them for them to come up with the idea that they would stole him, the scripture says, because of their grief, every man for his son and for his daughter. The trouble with the story is this. There was nobody there to protect what they had, and the strangers <coughs> Don't let the strangers in. Turn your other neighbor and say, Don't let your strangers in. Don't let your strangers in. No need for strangers to be in. There's another story about when the king took them in and showed them the jewels and showed them the crown and showed them the weapons and showed them all the things that was in the house. And then guess what he did? After he backed away and was gloating in the fact that I showed off all that I had, then the enemy came and robbed him and took it all away from him. Yep. He never let the strangers in. Right. Yep. He said, he did rob. I thought of this story this afternoon. Not knowing who would be here, not knowing what the service would be like, but only knowing what I felt in my heart. We've been robbed of some things. And that's what I want to address tonight. Amen. The enemy of our soul is the devil. Yep. We've 
already established that in First Peter 5 and 8. <coughs> and wants to have all the things that you so preciously treasure. Some individuals have been robbed of their joy. They look like they've been baptized in dill pickle brine. They have no smile on their face. They cannot speak a kind word to you in water. They look as if somebody is twisting their nose and causing them great pain. And many times I've observed these individuals and said to myself, what is it about them that anyone would want if they were observing them? But what the problem is, is that the thief has come and stolen their joy. They've forgotten the joy of the Lord in our strength. They've forgotten the joy that you can have that we sang about tonight. I feel the joy of the Lord falling fresh on me. Every now and then, you need a baptism of joy. Amen.
Come on. That's what the word says. We did rob with our morals. And that's what they're teaching in our schools. And that's what they're teaching our young people and our children. But I'm going to stand in this pulpit as long as I have breath. I'm going to stand on this platform as long as I have breath. And I'm going to reclaim what the devil has stolen from me. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Fifteen years ago. 
when I came here. And how difficult it was to trust. And how difficult it was to have confidence in you. And how difficult it was to believe that somebody was real, that somebody was genuine, that somebody really was what they portrayed to be. Yeah. And that it was not a facade, that it was not an act. But it was a true individual that loved them and was genuine in their love and in their concern. But what the problem is, in many times, in many cases, you're robbed in that confidence. I speak tonight of those individuals who have abused the folk and abused the opportunity to minister to individuals and taken advantage of innocent people and taken advantage of trusting congregations. I think it's an abomination for the Lord. And they'll answer for it. Sir. I said they'll answer for it. Amen. Amen. But no wonder people feel like they've been robbed of that. Right. Uh, Lord, when I was a child, they taught me, if that pastor tells you to jump over that fence, you go jump over that fence. You don't have, you don't question why he wants you to jump, you just go jump. He may tell you why later, he may never tell you at all. But if he says jump, you say how high. That's right. But we've been wrong today. Yeah. I said we've been wrong. We've been wrong. Of all of these things, the list goes on. I'm doing it. <coughs> but here's what happened. When they realized they'd been wrong, greatly was David was greatly distressed. Then the people spoke of stoning him. Because their souls were grieved, because every man had lost their sons and their daughters and their wives. Mm -hmm. And then David encouraged himself in the Lord. Now, I don't know what that means. I don't know exactly what it is. I know it probably correct, but I don't know how he decided to encourage it. It doesn't give me any instructions concerning that. Or any detail concerning that, but I do know this. He did something that was really not his right and privilege to do. He spoke to his right hand man and he said to him, he was a Bible. And he said to him, Go get me the ephah. They had to go into the tabernacle and they had to get this apron that the high priest wore and when the high priest would put that apron on, the spirit of the Lord would come on that high priest and God would begin to give that high priest direction <coughs> and help him to be able to go out and tell what the will of the Lord was for the people. Amen. But without permission, and without asking if it was all right, and being so very, very bold in his spirit, all right. yeah. David told Abiathar, go get me the ephod. Mm -hmm. oh. And he did. And David put it on. And when David put it on, the scripture says, it began 
Amen. So they went to the enemy's camp and just stopped. Like the song we're going to sing in just a little while, took back what had been taken from them. All right. Amen. They're free. We were talking about a situation, and I said, well, they stole this. They stole it. I said, no, I'm sorry. They did not have permission to take it. They stole it. That's right. You find a nickel laying on the floor of this church, and you don't put it back in the offering plate, you stole it. Amen. Nobody gave you permission to pick that nickel up and put it in your pocket. It belongs to the Lord. When I first came here, they're taking paper towels, toilet paper, anything they get their hands on. Oh, I walk to the Lord, and this is the Lord's, and so I'm going to use it. Let me tell you something. They were stealing us the line. Yes, that's right. Amen. Amen. That's right. Those things were taken without permission. In my Bible, that's Stephen. That's right. Amen. Amen. And the last time I checked Exodus, one of the commandments was Thou shalt not steal. Yes. Okay, what's 
said all that. Not everybody wants their stuff back. shall flee. Rebuke the devil and he shall flee. Rebuke the devil and he shall flee. Anything. Everybody say anything. Anything. 
anything. Yes. Hallelujah. And David took all the flocks and all the herds which they had driven before those and other cattle and said, This is David's boy. In other words, he looked over there and said, That's my sheep right there. And that's my cow right there. And uh, wait a minute here. And, and I think that one belongs to me. And this one over here, come on, come on. And had a rope or whatever and started gathering them up because they belong to me. They don't belong to the devil. And you have standing right there your possession, the most precious prize possession. And you've got to get it down in your heart. You've got to get it down in your heart. Owner's rights. Rebuke the devil. Church, that's all right. But I mean, this is just a temporary thing. Yeah. You can adopt. 